sisters, how y'all doing today? Good morning. It is a good day. Every moment is a gift. If you ain't got nothing to thank God for, just thank him for the air that you're breathing. That's enough right there. He's a good God. He's a mighty God. Today, I'm talking about the Men's Day 2015 celebration. And the theme is Christian men embracing the past Experiencing the present and expecting the future. That's from Lamentations 5.21. It's talking about our inheritance. Restore us to you, O Lord, that we may be restored. Renew our days as of old. We'd like to first thank everyone for attending our first event, the family and friends bowling outing, that was on August 29th, on a Saturday. And we hope that everyone had fun and hope that you will continue to support us throughout our upcoming events. Some of the scheduled events are tomorrow, the Small Business Administration Seminar, that's tomorrow, Monday, September 14th, starting at 6 o'clock, from 6 to 7.30. If any of you are thinking about starting any kind of business or if you have a small business and you're an owner of a small business or you're part owner or you just want to help or you just want some knowledge, our people suffer because of lack of knowledge. That's right. This will be a great opportunity for you to come and ask questions and get additional helpful information. And please ask questions. The dumbest question is the one not asked. For our Men's Day annual sing out that we have each year, which is awesome, gonna be Friday, September the 25th, starting at seven o'clock. There's gonna be some praising going on up in there for the Lord. Amen. We're gonna praise him, we're gonna praise him, and we're gonna worship him again in spirit and truth. And Lord, when we praise him, we wanna praise him so hard that the glory of the Lord just come down in the family life center and just sit upon us. Amen. And you feel the presence of the Lord. Because it's all about him, it's not about us. Then we're having our Men's Day breakfast and conference on that Saturday, September 26th from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. We always have a good word there. And we always have some good food for breakfast. Oh, uh, yes, really good food too. And then our abundance of it. God is in the blessing business here at Central Baptist Church. Then we will have fish fry in a recruitment outing for the men of the church. And that's Saturday, September 26th at four o'clock at Brothers Coleman's residence. Also other events to be announced in October and there are going to be some other dates to be, term be determined. We also hopefully bring up some other young men who have some young ideas and some fresh ideas about things that we as men can do for this church. We're supposed to be leaders in the church, leaders in your household, sons of God. Do things in order. Also, we're planning fishing trips for all the young men of the church and also a throwback fashion. It's, yes, it's coming up, a throwback fashion. I don't know if that means the 60s, 70s, 50s, what, the 80s, but anyway the men will be thrown back in their fashion. 
So we'd like to just ask everyone to come and support us. Come and support us. You wives and significant others, come and support your men and see your men praising and worship the Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Thank you. Let the church say amen. amen. You love the Lord. Say amen again. Amen. The Lord has been mighty good to you. Put your hands together and give God a hand clap of praise in this building. Oh, come on. We can do better than that. Just praise Him right where you are because the Lord is worthy to be praised. How many of you know that when praises go up, that blessings will come down? Do this for me. Just praise God for the person next to you right now. Just praise God for the person next to you right now. Say, God, this praise is for the person next to me right now. I'm praising for a blessing for them. I'm praising for a breakthrough for them. I'm praising for a miracle for them. Amen, somebody. Now praise God. Say, God, now I need a breakthrough. I'm, this praise is for me. I, I need a miracle. I need you to show up right now. Can you just praise him for how good he's already been? Can you praise him for where he brought you from? Can you praise him for where you're getting ready to go? I dare you just to praise God for whom all blessings flow. Because the Lord is worthy to be praised. Let's just take a praise break right here. Let's just take a station identification right here and just praise him anyhow. This is praise headquarters this morning. If for nothing else, he allowed you to see another day. And that's worth praising him right there. If for nothing else, the blood is running warm in your vein. That's worth praising him right now. If nothing else, you're cold and you're in your right mind. That's worth praising him right now. Just give God praise all over the building. Throw your hands up and just praise him. Just, just wave him and praise him. Just, just praise him. Anyhow. I need to feel praise in this building. Hands up, mouths open. Praise saturated, 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 Pastor don't have to preach me happy. All I need is a good memory because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all. At this time, well, was, we have some seniors at the doors and some on the wall, but all our seniors, we are standing at this time. Remain standing a second. And those who are standing, just wave your hand. But senior, Miss. I got my three seniors back there, Miss Castillo, Miss Van Hannigan, and Miss Ashford. They're celebrating their anniversary. They're all our seniors. Let's give them a wonderful hand. They don't do this at 8 and 11 o'clock every Sunday, every homegoing service they're here, every time the doors open they're here. Let's give God praise for our seniors as they celebrate their anniversary of the day. Congratulations again to you. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. We congratulate them. Amen. Um, this week I'm at Revival Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday night at the Bethlehem Baptist Church at Ridgeway. I'm asking our male chorus who comes to me on Wednesday night. We'll leave the church probably about 6.45, by 10 to 7, because we're doing our Bible set us up like this week at noon and at 6 o'clock. And we'll leave here going to Bethlehem. I'm looking forward to being with the men on that night. Amen. And when we study the word this week at 12 at noon, let me tell you something that's awesome about studying the word of God. Let me tell you, the more to study, the more you find out we need to study. Amen. If you think you know it all, you're in trouble. Oh, that's right. Amen, somebody. Amen. Remember, mind is only like an umbrella, and only works open when it's open. Amen. 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 And we thank you for your contributions to our food drive and recognition of the outreach ministry 
of our voices of praise as well as honoring Sister Jesse Miles, one of their members of the Lord's of Praise and a faithful member of this church. Thank you for your donation you have made through canned goods. Continue to bring them because we're running all through the month of September. Amen. If you've forgotten to do it, I know it's on your mind, so please, ma'am, please, sir, let's do so. And we're still waiting for the men to join the choir who have not arrived yet for men's day. We know you're on your way. You just have not arrived yet. Amen. We have practice again this Saturday at 10 o'clock, brothers. Amen. You want to be involved in some aspect of men day. I don't want to be a man in a church when something is going on with me and I'm not a part of it. Say so, Pastor. I need to be a part of something. I just can't be in the pew all the time. Let me tell you something. I was never good at on the bench. I had to get in the game. That's right. Amen, somebody. You know, I had to get in the game, and the action is in the game. Amen. You may not be able to do this or that, but you say, I can volunteer to do something. If you come to me after church and say, Pastor, what can I do? I'll tell you. We'll find something for you to do. But you got to be willing to do something. Amen. We need men who are going to usher men to work with the sound booth. We want on that fourth Sunday this month, I want the men to do everything around the church. I don't want to say late teaching at all. <laughs> Did y'all catch that? <laughs> uh, Mr. Vice Chair, I want no ladies teaching that Sunday. No class. Even a small class that men are going to take over. Amen. You hear me, Mr. Vice Chair? <laughs> we got it covered now. Amen, somebody. We want the ladies to just let them sit down and rest a little while. They, we can handle this on the full sun. Amen. We don't even want, they don't even have to cook in the kitchen. We're going to take over that for ourselves. Oh, have mercy. Amen, somebody. Amen. 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 Brother, y'all, y'all are with me. I'm your brothers. Amen. Y'all are The chair was said, we're going to handle it. Amen. So, uh, we're looking forward to it. Amen, somebody. Get the way. Amen. We're on the choir. Like, like I'm looking for Grant. Grant, you're going to either be an usher or a choir member. I'm, I'm looking to stand up, man. You look too sharp and too handsome today. You're going to be an usher or a choir member. One of the two. And you choose which one. <laughs> Especially, he has my office cooler now, airing than it's ever been. The last meet we had, everybody was complaining how hot it is. It's cool now, airing. Amen. Thanks, Brother Grant. We praise God much and mighty. And we're just looking forward to having a great time. And later on in October, they'll talk about doing a fishing trip. They said, Rev, we're going on the water. So I'll see you when you get back. <laughs> if you can't swim, I don't see why you're on the water, y'all. First thing is that some have with the water and Pastor Drown. Pastor know he can swim. That's why I know it. The Lord know it. I'm not going to rep over with him on the water. So man, y'all, y'all bring the fish back. Amen. I'll meet y'all when you get back. Amen. And on the seminar on tomorrow night for the Small Business Administration, even though I'm in revival, I'm going to be here for the seminar and leave a little bit early to get to the revival. It's important for our people to get knowledge. Amen. You know, one of the reasons we suffer is because things are available. We don't make ourselves available. Amen. Iron, the Bible says, sharpens iron. Mm -hmm. If something is available, can help me in my business, can help me as I think about formulating a business to do something, I need to get the information. Business plan, that type of stuff they're talking about offering you here will cost you hundreds of dollars to get the knowledge to do. Our men are putting it on free. Let's come out and let's support them and have a great time in doing it. Amen. I don't know. I'm just excited about what's happening with the men. They got a lot of good things going on. We praise God much and mighty. And then every man we ask to give a spiritual donation of $100. Now, I know that most of the men in here gave the donation when you help your wives and your significant others out for Women's Day. Amen. I know y'all did. I know they did not write the check. If they did, the money came out of your account. We won't tell nobody, but I know you helped them out. Amen, somebody. But you're not really asking them for help on this side because as a head of the house leading, you will not ask them to help you and you're supposed to lead them. Amen. That's right. 
Come on, likes. <laughs> Amen, somebody. All right, brothers, we got it covered. Enough said, nothing else needs to be said. Amen. Will our visitors please stand? And remain standing. Will our visitors please stand and remain standing? Remain standing. Yeah. Slow it down a minute, Anthony. Slow it down. I'm going to let you get down. Anthony, love the weapon with that song. I'm going to bring you in. Hold, hold it. He was on it right quick. Mother, he was on that song right quick. To our visitors, we say to you, we're glad that you chose our church to worship with us on today. We pray that our worship service will be a blessing to you. There are many places you could have been, but you chose to come here at the Central Baptist Church. May God's richest blessing be upon each of you. And when you come again, please bring a friend with you. Amen. And remain standing for our musical welcome to you. Come on, Anthony. All right. <laughs> Let us stay. Let us stand as we prepare for our offering. Amen. Let us stand. All who are able to stand, we ask that you please stand. Prior to lifting off, offering, let me first of all thank you for your faithfulness and your stewardship efforts. The Lord has blessed our church because we have been a blessing to so many other people. Let us always be faithful and giving to the Lord and watch and see what God will I received a text message from Pastor Ronald D. Barton, who served as former pastor of the Central Baptist Church. Pastor Barton is on dialysis, they had a heart attack, had surgery. And our church sent him a love offering donation from our budget. He said, Pastor, you don't know what it means to me for the church to think enough of me to bless me financially. The true measure of a church is not what it does for itself, but what it does for others. Amen. Amen. He served well as our former pastor of this church. We should always honor and esteem those who have gone on before us. So he wanted to make sure we thank the church for what we sent to him. Flowers are good. Cars are good. Candy and all that stuff, that's good. But when you come out of the hospital and you got that's expense, right. you need a little sub sub. To help you pay him and take care of him, amen. Yeah. And as a church, we wanted to bless him and let you know as a church family, he said, thank you. Let us pray. God, we thank you for the opportunity to give back to you. A portion of that which you have blessed us with. We truly believe that you cannot be God given, no matter how hard you try. For the more you give to God, the more God will give back to you. The word said the Lord loves a cheerful gift. We come now cheerfully giving back to you because you are the source of all our resources. So we come now bringing your tithes and bringing our offering. Bless those who are faithful tithers at this church. Bless those who are given but have not yet matured to the level of a tither. And bless those who just don't believe yet that you're still able to supply that need if they are obedient to your word. We come down in the precious name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Thank God and amen. amen. Inside out, turn and face each other. Outside out, turn and face the wall. Stay in your lane and you'll wind up back in your seat. Amen.
presiding officer this morning, the personality of Reverend Winslow Harrison. We thank God for Reverend Kenneth Wilson. We also thank God and all of you, Reverend Clarence Adam. We praise God for each and every one of you, my brothers and sisters on this Christian journey. Amen. Deacon Sutton, will you stand one second, sir? We have our deacon and deaconess training this morning, 10 o'clock. Amen. We have an interesting training set up for you with me this morning. And a couple of our deacons, we're going to do what we call role playing. The day we are, we're going to do hospital visitation, and what we're going to be in the nurse's room, there will be a patient in the bed. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You would not be in the room. You're going to come to the room as though you're making a hospital visitation. All right. All right. We're going to listen to what you say. If you lead a song, don't have no funeral song and kill them. <laughs> Sometimes we go in and make the people more depressed than they are in the hospital room. Right? If you're going to go have a scripture, have a scripture that lends hope and not put them in the grave. That's right. Amen. Amen. And when you go in the room, don't ask whether the pastor been by there. <laughs> we'll see you at 10 o'clock. <laughs> Y'all keep praying for me. I'm looking forward to that. That's right. It says, Amen. Check and see what there's a, a light on at the door. You don't just go in the room when there's a light on. You got to go to the nurse's station. Yes. All right. I'm looking forward to that training session. Amen. I don't even know where I am on the program now. I'm somewhere. <laughs> oh, the scripture. Amen. We had the scripture from that standpoint. Uh, let us stand in preparation for the reading of our scripture. Our scripture will be led in our reading by... Uh, the president of our church's ministry, Deacon Evan Knight. They will hold on, Evan. They want me to tell where they're coming. All right. When you have it, just say amen. If not, amen. just say hold amen. on. Amen. I'll be reading from the NIV version, uh, Gospel according to Luke, chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. One day, as Jesus was standing by the crowd, by the lake of Gennesaret, with the people crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw as the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one boat, one of the boats, the boat belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from shore. Then sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, because you say so, I will let down the nets. Mm -hmm. Thus I have read the gospel according to Luke chapter 5 verses 1 Amen. through 5. God's words, God's people.
can't call him in the middle of the night. I can call him in the middle of the night. Can I get a witness this morning? If all you do, you can call him. And when I call him, and when I call him, I said, and when I call him, and when I call him, oh my God, I don't know about nobody else.
Because when you've been through something, you know it was nobody but the Lord that brought you out. Let me say that again. When you've been through something and folks you thought you could count on were not there for you and you know you almost lost your mind, it was nobody but the Lord that brought you out. You don't have time to come to church and be cute and try to impress nobody. All you want to do is to give God the praise and give God the glory because if he did it before, he can do it some more. If he did it back then, he can do it again. So every now and then, you just got to praise him right where you are. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you, Kwai. Jesus promised that he'll take care of me, and he will take care of you. Thank you, Deacon Knighton, for leading us in the reading of our scripture. Someone left some keys in the lady restroom that Deacon Knighton I have with him. If you're trying to leave and you can't find your keys, check with Deacon Knighton. Amen. He has them for you. The gospel according to Luke chapter 5, verse 1 through 11, but for summarizing part of the pericope we're going to use verse chapter 5 1 through 5 but let me thank those of you who celebrated with us last week on that sermon when you're under attack and also let you know that CDs and DVDs are available at the sound booth if you don't have time to wait and you need to pick it up on next Sunday just let them know and they would have it ready for you or they could make it within a couple of seconds for you when you're on the attack last week, I reminded not if the attack come, but when the attack come. The Lord says, Simon, Simon, Satan had desired to have you, but I prayed for thee that thy faith faileth thee not. And when thou art converted, you ought to strengthen the brethren. So when you find yourself going through attack last week, I remind you the reason for the attack. Satan desires to have you. Uh, if you were not doing anything, wasn't trying to go anywhere, wasn't trying to accomplish anything, the devil wouldn't mess with you. Amen. But the minute the Lord gets the blessing, the devil gets the messing. Huh? Uh, then look at the response while you're under attack. The Lord said, I have prayed for thee. If don't nobody else pray for me, I'm glad that Jesus is praying for me. He's sitting at the right hand of the Father. And then our responsibility, when we come out, when we repent, it will to go back and strengthen the brethren. Now, I tried to send you out a phone tree message. Raise your hand if you got the message this past week. If you desire to be on our phone tree to receive the message, I sent out, call the secretary to make sure she has your number because sometimes you'll get the message at the right time. I lift you at the right time. Sometimes the enemy is attacking you at the very time that you get that message. We want to make sure we encourage you. Luke chapter 5. I want to look at verse 5 and I want to look at an NIV translation. Simon answered, Master, we worked hard all night. We haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the net. I want to preach from a sermon idea because God says so. Because God says so. Now, the living Bible said, Master, we have, the, the King James said, Master, we have called all night and have caught nothing. Nevertheless, at that word, would I let down the net? Because God says so. I don't know about many of you, but I was raised in an old fashioned home. My mama used to say some of the strangest things. I wish I had a little help in here today. And I have learned that regardless of what area we have grown up in, we have some things in common. I was never devilish. I was mischievous. I remember one day my mama said, boy, don't you make me slap the taste out of your mouth. 
I know him by myself. That, 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 that ain't helpful to nobody else around here. She always told me, if you're going to be a man and have a family, provide for your family, because a man that won't work will steal. I'm just talking about things that were said around in my house. She went on telling me, be careful of listening to what everybody tells you because a dog that brings a bone will also carry one. Just around my house there. She reminded me, Ricky, don't let the devil ride. If you let him ride, he'll take over and want to drive. Back in Georgia, she used to tell me things, boy, don't you get too big for your britches. See, y'all didn't talk about britches around here. She said, don't get too big for your britches. And, and, and if I was doing something I should not be doing, boy, you know you manish. Y'all didn't hear manish in South Carolina. Manish was in Georgia. If a girl was doing something, sit your little face only self down. <laughs> I'm out by myself in here. He been somebody. And then when she would get really mad when I do something crazy, boy, I brought you in this world. Now, I'm, don't y'all leave here talking about pastor told you to go take your child out of this world. I'm just making a saying what my mama used to say. But then she had a favorite saying, and because all my, my sister was older, so we just had boys in the house at the time. Mama, why do I have to wash dishes? Boy, because I said so. Huh? Mama, why, why do I have to get the fire with boy? Because I say it so. But when I looked at this text, it wasn't Mama who said so. God said so. Because God said so. As I was preaching uh, John Ray for today. Jesus continued his teaching tour. And one day was preaching on the shore of the Sea of Galilee. Word about Jesus had spread everywhere. So great crowds pressed in on him to listen to the word of God. Jesus could stand on the shore and the people could sit on the hillside to listen. On this occasion, the crowds were pushing in and around him, practically backing him into the lake. Then he noticed two empty boats. The fishermen had left them and the fishermen now were washing their nets. See, nets had to be kept in good condition so they were washed to remove weeds and then mended in preparation for the next fishing expedition. Jesus got into one of the boats. He called his owner, Simon, surnamed Peter, and asked him to push it out into the water. From this position, Jesus sat and taught the crowds. As the crowd strong Jesus, he was being pushed back forward toward the lake when he saw these empty boats, he thought there would be an ideal location that he could just teach from one of them. See, a lot of fishing was done off the shore of the sea. Historian Josephus stated that as many as 240 boats were regularly fish in the waters of Galilee. The normal fishing boat in that time was not very big. These boats would range from 16 to 20 feet in length. Usually a crew of four men manned them the sail was large, a large triangle attached to a central mast, enabling the boat to be operated by the sail or just by the oars. Two men usually steered the boat, while the other two worked with the nets. During this time, se several methods were used to fish. One was a hook and a line. Next was a net that was thrown from the shore. It was about 9 feet to 15 feet in diameter with weights on the edges. The third method was a large drag net that was strung between two or more boats in deep water. This net was about 300 feet long and eight feet wide. These nets were vital for the survival of the fishermen. This is why they kept them clean and repaired. After a night of work, they would wash the nets to remove the weeds, the sand, the pebble, and also make repairs to the lines that had been torn. This is what these hard-working fishermen was doing when Jesus spotted their boats. And then around the third verse, it said, And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. 
See, Jesus entered Peter's boat and asked him to push the boat a little from the shore so that he could preach to all the people sitting or standing on the hillside. Everybody was crowded all around the hillside. So Jesus needed to be pushed a little farther away from the land so he could get in the boat. Jesus' request may have seemed inconvenient for Peter, who was most likely tired, but he honored the Lord's request in a way. In other words, Peter was tired. Lord, we've been out here toiling all night long, and we haven't caught anything. I'm really tired, Lord. I don't feel like doing any more, but let me tell you, there may be times, my beloved, when serving the Lord may be inconvenient for you. You may be tired. But you honor the Lord with your attitude and service will you receive blessings if you are faithful. Ah, uh, serving the Lord is not always easy. But somebody here ought to be a living witness that it will pay off. Serving the Lord may inconvenience you every now and then. Uh, but I stop by to tell you that if you just keep trusting and keep pressing, the Lord will make a way for you. Sometimes you have to go through in order to get to, but the Lord is on your side. That it wasn't easy for somebody to make it here today, but you, 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 you press your way anyhow. Somebody had some struggles all week long. The enemy been on your track. Uh, somebody tried to block you from being here today. You, you had to fuss before you left your house, but you made your way out anyhow. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I've learned that serving the Lord may not be easy, but in the long run, it surely will be worth that. Do I have a witness in here? Uh, I've made up my mind that the Lord's been too good for me, to me for me not to serve the Lord. Uh, the Lord has blessed me too much for me not to serve the Lord. Uh, the Lord has opened too many doors for me not to serve the Lord. Uh, the Lord keeps right on blessing me and the Lord keeps right on keeping me. Uh, he gives me blessing that I don't even deserve. And uh, Every now and then I just got to learn to tell the Lord thank you. Uh, if you don't do anything else, Lord, you already blessed me more than I deserve to be blessed. I, I just got to tell the Lord, thank you. Is there anybody here today that's just grateful today that just can tell the Lord, thank you? I mean, do I have anybody that's grateful today that just can tell the Lord, thank you? Tell, tell them, tell them, tell them, tell them. I don't have anything new, but I can just still say thank you. I'm living in the same place, but I, I still can say thank you. I still have some struggle. I still have some issues, but I still can say thank you. I'm just glad to be alive one more day. Is there anybody here glad to be alive? Uh, every time you turn on the television, shoot it over here and shoot it over there. People act like they done lost their mind. This is not New York City or L.A. It's Columbia, South Carolina. And because people about to lose their mind, I'm just glad to be in the number just one more day. For this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Ah, uh, if you just serve him, everything will be all right. We find this is true in Peter's life and this story. And now when he had left speaking, he said unto Peter, lunch out into the deep, let down your nets for a draw. In other words, my brothers and sisters, he told them to lunch out into the deep. But I have three insights from this text. I won't hold you long today. Three words I just want to leave with you today. Lunch, let, and leave. You got that? Three L's. Lunch, not lunch like you get ready to go to lunch to eat. Lunch, L-A-U-N-C-A. Lunch, let, and leave. Y'all with me? He told me to lunch out into the deep. When Jesus told Peter to launch out into the deep. See, Peter was comfortable on the shore. Sometimes we are comfortable in shallow waters. But the Lord told me to tell somebody today, you need to launch out. You need to launch out into the deep water. See, shallow water, you can put your toe in it. You don't have to do much in shallow water. But when you launch out in the deep water, you may be taking a risk going out in an uncomfortable area. You've been at this level on your job for 20 years. There's a promotion that's open now. It's going to increase your pay, increase your responsibility, but you're afraid to apply for it. Because somebody done told you you don't qualify for it who you're hanging around. 
But you ought to know that we serve a God who qualifies the unqualified. Huh? The Lord told me to tell you, don't be afraid to lunch out. Don't be afraid to lunch out into the deep water. Shallow water is fun. Shallow water is safe. But shallow water will never take you to where the Lord wants you to be. Sometimes you got to leave the shallow water and step out into the deep water. Somebody here wants to move. You, you want a bigger house. You want to move in a nicer neighborhood. But you're scared to leave the comfortable area where you are. You're so happy with $300 to $400 a month payment. That's shallow water. But if you want to have what God can bless you with, you got to leave the shallow water and go out in the deep water and trust what God will do for you. Somebody here wants to upgrade what you're driving. But you're listening to play our haters around you who tell you that you don't need that automobile. Uh, if you want something better and you can afford better and the Lord has blessed you to get better, stop staying in the shallow water. Step out in the deep water and trust that the Lord will make a way for you. He told Peter to lunch. Lunch out into the deep water. Guess what he was telling him? Now remember Peter said, uh, we've been out here all night. We've been fishing all night, been tolling all night, and we haven't caught anything. Watch this. Don't miss your shout. He was telling Peter to return to the place where he failed. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Return to the place where you have failed. I know you've been out there all night long. I know you haven't had any success. But when I said lunch, I want you to return to the area where you fail. The word lunch out means to lead back or to return. Peter was to return to the deep again and let down his nets plural and he would reap a drought or a cat. He would be successful and blessed because he was obedient. There are several thoughts we will bring to the surface here. First of all, there may be time. When we need to return to our place of failure in order to find our blessing. Great Lord, how much? That's good stuff right there. That's good stuff right there. That, that, that y'all to be happy early this morning. Sometime we got to return to the place of failure in order to receive our blessing. What are you saying, Pastor? Glad you asked. I'm going to make it clear for you. Some people quit and run from their problem when they face difficulties and they never work through them. In so doing, they rob themselves of the blessing that comes from sticking out and the lesson and diligence and determination that these lessons teach. Huh? Sometimes you're going through stuff it's not the best remedy to run away from the problem. Sometimes you got to hang in there long enough and stick with it long enough and learn long enough in order for God to bless you in the midst of what you're going through. Hmm? People end up constantly jumping from one place to another because no matter where they go, they encounter the same difficulties and problems. If you haven't solved the problems where you were before, what makes you think the problem is going to be any different from where you're going now? Remember where you're going now may be different from where you were before. But remember the same person's in both equations. You were there before and you're going to be there where you go now. If you don't solve your problem, then it ain't going to change anything when you get to where you're going. Huh? My beloved, we got to learn to work out our difficulty. It's not always necessary to jump from one job to another job, from one marriage to another marriage, because you won't deal with your difficulty. You may have failed in your relationship with other people. Perhaps you were offensive or handling a matter unjustly, unfairly, or in the wrong manner. You may have been a lousy husband or wife. Your marriage may have ended in divorce. Maybe you were an irresponsible employee for your boss and you had to quit or you were fired. What do you do? You go back to your place of failure. You go back to those folks who you have hurt. You go back to that person you offended and you make the issue right. Nobody applauded off that. Let me say it again. Everybody hurts somebody. 
Everybody has done something you're not proud of. But in order for you to receive what God has in store for you, you got to go back to your place of failure. If the marriage didn't work and it was your fault, go back to that person and tell them, I'm sorry for what I did to you. Now that don't mean I want you back because the best thing that happened that we had to go our way. I wish I had some help in here. But I need to go back to that place of failure and address what happened. Huh? Clear your conscience by seeking forgiveness and make restitution for damages if this is required. Let me put it here. Somebody in here owes somebody you haven't paid. And somebody in here don't intend to pay them. Huh? And it's created some tension in y'all's relationship. Maybe you don't have the money right now to pay them. But you ought to at least have enough courage and trust that if I go to that person and talk to them and let them know I don't have it, but I haven't forgotten about you, things, I can't give you all that I owe you, but I can give you a little something now. Because see, if you do that, then it opens up the door. But God to bless you with other you're going to need. Now when you're old folks, you can't be like Matt Dillon, like you're the baddest person in town, and get an attitude when they come to you about the money you owe them, which is their money. Well, why are you coming at me? You must be hurting for money. You need it. It's my money. I don't have to be hurting for it, but you borrowed the money. You have to make things right with somebody for the Lord to show no bless you. Now, I have a witness in here. I see you don't do it for that person's sake, but you do it for your sake. You don't go ask forgiveness for that person, but you do it for your sake. If you forgive that person, then God opens up the door to forgive you. And I don't know about you, but I stand in need of forgiveness forgiven. I stand in need of God's grace. I, I stand in need of God's mercy. Is there anybody here that's willing to forgive somebody and open up the door for the Lord to forgive you? Our goal is to try and restore the relationship and correct the damage that have been done. This is what Zacchaeus did. Zacchaeus in 19.8 stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. If I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. James 5 and 6 says, Well, to confess our fault one to another, pray for one another that ye may be healed. The effect of fervent prayers of a righteous man of relative mud. First of all, we feed on the milk of the word, then the meat of the word. We start in shallow waters as new Christians, but then we are to launch out into the deeper waters of life that require more faith, more courage, and more maturity, and greater trust in God. Christ challenges us to follow him, serve him, and live by faith. We are to be the people of faith. We are to, lunch, we are to be believers who launch out into the deep at the command of the Lord Jesus Christ and trust Jesus Christ and trust him for our blessings. First of all, the text tells us today that you got a lunch. And I don't know who I'm speaking to here. Somebody here is on the verge of the workshop on tomorrow night. You, you want to start a business, but you, you talk to other folks who told you how tough it is in business. Uh, you got to know my brothers and sisters that seven out of ten business fail in the first three years. Did you hear that? Seven out of ten business fail in the first three years. But see, you got to listen to how your ear receives things. When, when somebody told me that, guess what I said to myself? I'm going to be in the three. Why are you focusing on the seven? Why you can't be in the three? Why you have to be one of the business that fail? Why, 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 why you receive that? You got to receive the fact that seven fail. I know I'm going to be in one of the three. Because you got to prepare yourself to be able to launch out into the deep water. Second, you got to let down your net. And I like what the word of the Lord said, let down your nets for a draw. Let them down for a catch. In other words, I'm going to let the net down expecting to catch some fish. I'm not just letting it down for the sake. And Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have told all night, have taken nothing, and nevertheless at thy word, but because you say so, I will let down the net. What Jesus was recommending seemed fruitless and illogical. Peter knew that the fish was not as active in the day. As they were in the night hour, they did not feed near the surface of the water during the day because of the heat. 
it would also be much more difficult to catch the fish in the day because they could see the nets and the boat. The fact that Jesus was a carpenter and not a fisherman probably did not help matters at all. Nevertheless, Peter tells the Lord, if you say so, God, I will go ahead and do what you command. See, night fishing was, a ve was very common on the Sea of Galilee. Fishing was usually best during the night while the fish was active and feeding closer to the surface where their nets could more easily trap them. I'll never forget cooking mother, the late Miss Willie Mae Gasson was an active fisher. She used to love to go at night and they would fish overnight. I never could get with that child. I loved to eat them when they'd been caught clean and cooked. I never could get by sitting and waiting for fish to be caught. Somebody told me, Reverend, you don't know what you're missing. You can go on the creek and sit some eight hours and forget all of your problems. I told him I don't have that many problems I need to forget. Do I have a witness in here? If Simon and others had been throwing out and pulling in nets over and over all night long and had caught nothing, surely they were tired and frustrated. Jesus said, however, you will catch many fish. But Simon answered Jesus, but if you say so, God, we will do. It shows his faith in what the Lord could do. God commands are not always logical or practical or convenient. Why is your faith in the matter? We do not think the same way as the Lord thinks. This is what Isaiah tried to get across to us, and my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, said the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fish, and that net began to break. In other words, when he was obedient to the word of God, and he went and launched out a little bit deeper, and when he let his net down, the same place that he had caught nothing, they began to fish started leaping in the net. Do I have a witness in here? So you don't know what God can do. And you don't know what God can work out in your life. So you're willing to let out and let your net down and see what God can do. Yes, maybe you failed before. Maybe you lost a job before. Maybe you had some personal issues before. But the Lord said to go out and lunch and let your net down. And then they caught so many fish that that net began to break. The Greek rendition of that as the net began to tear. Now look what happened, my brothers and sisters, in 5, 6, and verse 2, 7. And look what they happened all uh, when it happened. In verse 5, 6, they were catching so many. Uh, and he said, nevertheless, at that word, I'm going to do it. And verse number 16 said that when they had done this, they caught a great multitude of fish and that net began to break a tap. And verse number 7 said that then they beckoned unto their partners. In other words, the other ones that were with them in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And then they came and filled both the ship. In other words, they had caught so many fish that they could fill not only their ship, but they can fill another ship. At the same time, somebody missed out, shout right there. When you learn to lunch out and let your net down, when you learn to be obedient to the word of God, the Lord can bless you so much that you're going to have to call some of your friends and call some of your family and call some of your relatives. Say, so y'all come help me with the blessing. And then it'll be enough for them to share in on what the Lord has done for you. Uh, can I get a witness in here? Look at what verse number 8 said in our text that if you just share when Simon Peter saw that he felt unworthy and said, Lord, depart from me, for I am a sinful man. I don't know how you feel, but that's good enough right there. If the Lord tell me to let my net down, I'm going to let my net down because I want to be blessed, but I got some folks that I want to be blessed to. When I let my net down, all my social ministers going to be blessed. When I let my net down, all my deep gonna be blessed uh, when I let my net down all my trustees they gonna be blessed uh, when I let my net down all my church members they're gonna be blessed uh, I don't just want the Lord to bless me but I want the Lord to bless everybody that he is around me well I had to go back to the place that I had failed one time how many of you know if you go back under the wheel of God that even though you failed over there that the Lord had opened up a window he will pull out a blessing that you don't have 
room enough to receive. Uh, do I have a witness in here? Is there anybody here that know the Lord is still in the blessing business? Is there anybody here know he'll open up the window and he'll give you a blessing? Oh, I wish I had somebody here that know what God can do. Is there anybody here ever received a crazy blessing? Is there anybody here ever received a don't make any sense blessing? Is there anybody received a, a stupid blessing that the young folk would say? But I've learned that when he blesses me, he can bless you too. Is there anybody here that can praise God for blessing not only your family, but blessing somebody else's family at the same time? I wish I had a praiser in here. I wish I had somebody here that look at what he's done for me, but look at what I'm sharing with others. I'm going to call somebody rather than getting on Facebook, tweeting all your business about what y'all to stay off stuff. Let me tell y'all something. Stop putting all your business on Facebook. Don't matter what he's having all your problems and what you're going through on Facebook. Get on Facebook and talk about how good the Lord has been. Get on Facebook and talk about how the Lord has blessed you. Get on Facebook and talk about how he's healed your body. Get on Facebook and talk about how he made a way. We put some of the crazy stuff on Facebook. Stop telling all your business on Facebook. Huh? You know why? Because people just going to block you back. They ain't going to agree with you. It's a waste of time and effort. I don't make any responses. None. But whatever you send me, I might read if I have a chance. But I ain't responding. That's not me. I like to talk to you. I want to hide behind something like OMG, oh my God. I don't want to hide behind something SMH shaking my head. LOL, laugh out loud. Let me press on. Be careful what you put out there. Recent somebody got arrested. Now, this is just silly. They robbed the store, robbed somebody. It was on Facebook, selfing themselves with the stolen goods. And the police got a cop and arrested them. Now, you know, not that you can say, oh, my God, shaking my head and stuff like that. That don't make no sense. Huh? Lunch. Let. My brothers and sisters, then, we need to learn to lead. That's what happens when we start looking at verse 10. We need to learn to lead. And verse 10 makes it clear. And so also was James and John and the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, henceforth thou shalt catch me. And verse number 11 tells us that when they received this word, I, when they had brought their ships to the land, they forsook all. They left everything they had, including a great catch of fish, and they followed him. Huh? Lunch, let, and leave. What are you willing, my brothers and sisters, leave behind, willing to leave behind and follow the Lord? I don't know about you, but I made up in my mind, whatever I have, God gave it to me. Whatever I am, that I am. By the grace of God. As I make my way to a close, the Bible says, if any man, the what Lord said to his eyes, is going to follow me and come up and let them deny themselves. Let them pick up their cross daily and let them follow me. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not unto our own understanding. All thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Well, I learned that whatever I have that the Lord gave to me, that the Lord can take it away. But I can still say, blessed be the name of the Lord. Do I have a witness in him? Because the Lord is still able. Oh, my brother and sister, the Lord sometimes will do things that we may not understand, but we got to learn to trust him even when we cannot trace him. Well, when Israel confronted the city of Jericho, God's strategy for attack was to march around the city 
for six days and keep quiet. On the seventh day, they were to march around it again and shout as loud as possible. The attitude was, God, we don't understand it, but God, we will do it if you say so. Gideon faced a massive army of the Midianite. God's solution was to take 300 men who were around the enemy camp at night, break their clay pitchers that hid some torches, and blow a horn. The attitude was, because you say so, Lord. The result was an overwhelming victory for Gideon and God's people. For the widow Zarephath, who was almost out of food, Elijah told her that God's solution was to go get every vessel of job and found she may have wondered what, Lord, but she did as the Lord commanded because she said, because God, you say so. Naaman the leopard was instructed to dip in the Jordan River some seven times to be healed of leprosy. He did not like this command at all. In fact, he became very angry. After some convincing of mothers, uh, he was able to say, God, because you say so. John 9, 6 and 7 tells us about a boy who was blind and he could not see. Well, when he was blind and could not see, uh, Jesus used an unusual remedy for him. He spat on the ground, took the spit and made clay, and rubbed it across his eyes. This boy who was blind now was not able to see. He was told to go wash in the pool of Siloam. He went his way and therefore was washed. Well, the others came to him and said, Now, this man by the name of Jesus, surely he is a sinner. And the young boy said, Be sinner or not, all I know is that I was blind, but now I see. Do I have a witness in here? I don't know how you feel, my brothers and my sister, but whatever comes my way, my attitude, Lord, I'm not worried about it. Because God, you say so. Do I have a witness in here? Tell him I know I might be going through right now, but I'm getting ready to come out, God, because you say so. How do I know God say so? Because he said it in his word. For God, he is our refuge and our strength. He's our very present help in the time of trouble. And that's why... I made up in my mind that I'm going to lean on the Lord because he is my friend and he is my guide because God, you say so. Well, every now and then, Lord, my enemies will get on my track, but you said so in Isaiah 54 and 17 that no weapon that's formed against me shall prosper. You said so in Psalm 23 that you'll take a table before me and you'll set a table in the presence of my enemies because God, you say so. You say anybody here that's early this morning can stand on the promise, God, because you say so. I've had my share of trials and tribulations, but God, you said those that suffer with you that one day they will love glorify with you because the Lord says so I wish I had somebody whose body has been wrecked with pain and the doctor has given you a bad report but you realize the Lord said so in his word that by his stripes would you be healed because the Lord I said the Lord I said the Lord say so I wish I had somebody here that a Praise him because he says so. How do you know, Pastor? He said, Let everything that had breath praise ye the Lord because the Lord says so. He said in his word, I will bless the Lord at all times. That his praise will be in my mouth because the Lord said so. He said, I don't taste and see that the Lord is good because the Lord said so. He said, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together because the Lord said so. The Lord told me to tell somebody, just hold on a little while longer. That better day. I said better days I said better days 
are coming after a while. Is there anybody here that's looking forward to better days? I wish I had somebody here. So I know the Lord is able. I know the Lord will. He'll bring me through. And the Lord will bring me out. I need a few witnesses here now who don't mind testifying in your praise that it was nobody but the Lord. It was nobody but the Lord. It was nobody but the Lord that brought me out. And that's why I got to praise him from what he's already done. Can you praise him in your going out? Can you praise him in your coming in? Can you praise him in the rising of the sun? Is he worthy? I said, is he worthy? Y'all ain't talking to me. I, I said, is he worthy? Is he worthy? Is he worthy to be praised? I wish I had somebody here that have a memory flashback and look at how you used to be and see what the Lord is doing right now. Somebody said, he's a God. You can't hurry. He's a God. You don't have to worry. He may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. Somebody shout always. Shout always. Shout always. Shout always. Shout always. I dare you to open up your mouth and give God the best praise. I dare you to open up your mouth and give God the highest praise. What's the highest praise? What's the highest praise? What's the highest praise? What's the highest praise? Somebody said hallelujah. 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 I dare you to say hallelujah. It's the highest praise. The devil don't want you to praise him. But can we praise him in here? Open up your mouth and tell him thank you. Tell him thank you. Is there anybody glad that you can praise him now? Because God, you say so. I'm getting ready to come out because you say so. I see a miracle in my life because you say so. I see an open door because you say so. You're going to wipe tears away from my eyes because you say so. Not the governor, not the president, not the mayor, not the pastor, but God, but God, but God, but God. But God, but God, but God, is there anybody here? Shout, but God, but God, but God, but God, but God. I dare you to praise him, but God, but God. Just tap on the pew right here and give him praise. Say yes, Lord. 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 Because you say so. When you're encountered, when you're being challenged, say, because you say so, God. I ain't worried about what nobody else say. I need to hear the voice of God. I say, whoever controls your ear controls your destiny. I don't listen to everybody, y'all. You better make sure you're hearing from God. Because you say so, God. Because you say so, even though I've fisherman, been fishing all night, didn't catch anything, but nevertheless, because you say so, we'll go back. And what, I, what you want me to do, I want you to launch out deeper, get off the shallow water, launch out deeper, and then let your net down for the catch. He didn't just say let your net down, let it down expecting the catch to the disciples didn't make any sense we've been fishing all night we haven't caught anything but he said because you said so yeah. I'm going back I'm going to let my net down when I let my net down because that's your word so many fish jumped on the net we didn't have to do anything I, I need no special bait I need no special gimmick to try to get them 
they all jumped in the net. The net didn't bother them. They jumped in it. And we had so much, I had to call my partners. Y'all come get some. Wouldn't it be great that God bless you so much you got to call your partner and say, come get some. Somebody missed that. You didn't receive it. God gave you such an overflow. You didn't say, I'm going to sell you some. You didn't say, I got to buy some. You said, come get some. I can't handle all the Lord has done for me. Somebody come get some. My blessings are overflowing. Come get some. I've already filled up another boat, but come get some. I wish I had somebody here that feel like I feel. When the Lord blesses you, you can't help but to share it with somebody. Tell them, come get some. There's enough for me. There's enough for you. Come get some. And when you do it, I'm going to leave everything else behind. Then I will become a fisherman of me. You got to leave some behind. Step out the shallow water. Lunch into the deep. What shallow water are you in now that you feel safe and secure? Lunch into the deep. Is shallow water when you've been in a relationship, somebody's broken your heart and wounded your spirit. Now you close yourself off. Don't want to love anybody. Don't want anybody to love you. Because you think you're protecting yourself when you're really limiting yourself. Why? It's comfortable in shallow water because you feel like can't nobody hurt you. But you can't give no love. And you can't get no love. Because across your heart it says shallow water. Hmm? I know I'm talking to somebody in here. Now don't go out running looking for anything in anybody. Be obedient and willing to where the Lord is leading you. And he might not always lead you to the brother with the bicep and the six pack. Yo, Denzel. Huh? He may not lead you to that person. But the one he's going to lead you to will treat you better than that one would ever treat you if you're willing to leave the shallow water. When I said that, Deacon Taylor said, talk to him, Rev. So I'm like, you make an invitation there, boy. I said, step out the shallow water. He said, talk to him, Rev. Shallow waters are comfortable. Hmm? It's easy to stay in a comfort zone. Part of the preach word is to disturb those who are comfortable and to comfort those who are disturbed. I'm not a shallow water type person. Y'all know the visions in my head that the Lord gave me are so big, they would scare most of y'all. If the Lord took your brain and put it in my brain, you'll cease from existing. it explode what I see God getting ready to do. Somebody's in shallow water with some family member right now. Y'all upset of some stuff that happened two or three years ago. You got to step out the shallow. That's not the way mama would want you to react. Somewhere down the line, money's involved. Most of the time it is with us. Somebody paid some and somebody didn't pay some and somebody got some and somebody didn't get some and all kinds of stuff like that. It doesn't matter. I've, I've always had attitude. I don't want to have to get what somebody else has. I want to get my own. Yeah. You remember, I'm from a native from Georgia. Fort Valley is about an hour and 20 minutes from Augusta. The late Godfather said, I don't want nobody to give me nothing. Just open up the door. And I get it myself. 
step out of the shallow water, launch out into the deep. Somebody want to go back to school. You're not too old to go back to school. Somebody want to go back to school thinking you don't have the money. You can come up with the money and go back to school. There are enough grants, there are enough different things out there to get you in school. It's in your mind. Get out the shallow and get into the deep. Now, if you want to stay in the shallow water, don't get mad at folks who went in the deep and became successful. Huh? Don't get mad at somebody else. So they went back and got a degree because you don't want to go back now. But let's move beyond the shallow. And then when we move out there, don't just keep your net to yourself. Let it down. You can't catch nothing if you have the net all to yourself. Let the net down. The blessing is waiting on you if you just let the net down. You hold it on to the net. Let the net down. And the blessing will come to you. And then be willing to leave and follow Jesus. Because that's when payday comes after a while. Let us stand. Let us stand. And remember the disciples had to go back to the place where they had failed. Don't be afraid to go back and say, I'm sorry. Hmm? Don't be afraid to go to an ex and say, look, I forgive you. I want nothing but the best for you. Hmm? That messes with people. They can't understand that because they think you got an attitude like they have an attitude. We don't have no attitude. It just didn't work out. Sometimes things don't work out. We ain't got to get mad. We ain't got to be fighting. Don't be spray painting nobody's car. Don't be breaking nobody's window, doing all that crazy stuff. Let's just move on. You hear me? I, 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 don't, I don't understand that type of behavior that you can't move on. If the Lord blesses you, he'll bless you with a person that's going to see you and be able to deal with your faults and your failures and still love you unconditionally. Amen. There may be someone today up under the sound of my voice. Want to step out from where you are. Give the pastor your hand, but give God your heart. Maybe you need to be reminded I'm doing this because God says so. I'm not doing it for myself, not for my family, for nobody else. But I heard from the Lord. That you desire membership with our church family. You may come by letter. Your Christian experience or a candidate for baptism. We serve with whosoever will go. Whosoever will, let them come. The door of the church is open. It's a quality says in our invitation to heal. It's prayer time at the altar when you come to the altar for prayer. Prayer time at the altar.